Hey Legionnaires, welcome back. We're here with another 12-12 AD battle for you today. We have another 1v1 here as we have a glorious matchup between England and France. Two more rivals are facing off against each other. In the recent battle we had uh, the Teutonic Order up against the um, Kingdom of Poland. And now we have England against France. Arguably the greatest medieval rivalry of the age. And uh, yeah, it should certainly be an interesting battle, that's for sure. We have the... Uh, English here taking up a position on this sort of high ground as they love to do uh, with their archers. They've got their Welsh longbowmen here ready to go. Those famous longbows that dominated the battlefield for so long, beating the French on multiple occasions. And uh, yeah, we've got behind them some pole arms and billmen ready to go. And the French moving up here. They've got their French knights, the Gentiles here ready to go. It's some of the finest horsemen in all of Europe. We've got some handgunners as well. So France showing off some of its modern sort of tech, trying to beat those uh, outdated longbows. And we have plenty of gendarmes over here as well, like gendarmes, a high period, getting ready. So it looks like it should certainly be an interesting one, that is for sure. Uh, we've got Joan of Arc as well, which is arguably the most overpowered general around. So that will certainly be interesting to see uh, how that one, uh, how she does anyway. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of intrigued. I mean, this unit can fight to the death. So, uh, yeah, she could honestly be really tough to kill. But... As we saw in the last battle, if you haven't seen it already, I do recommend going and checking it out first. Generals are very important to keep alive in 1212. And they have such a massive influence on morale and just fighting capability of your army. Um, so yeah, you want to keep them alive. Um, talk about fighting capability. We sergeants exhausted from running up this hill. This is kind of crazy. What the heck have they been doing? We have now got archer fire now taking place over on the side. The Welsh longbows here are opening up. Looks like we've got gunners here as well. Kuvarinas. They're firing the uh, guard of Scots behind our, uh, just, you know, bit of support. France's army is a lot smaller, that is for sure, but it certainly seems like it's very elite. We've got a lot of, um, uh, like, really expensive halberds here, like the Swiss halberds are here. We've got the, uh, obviously, the um, Scottish halberds as well. Very expensive units. Got just some tier two sergeants. It's pretty much the only infantry that they have, like, basic sword infantry. Um, this mounted Chevalier has got a couple of those to support the cav, I presume. England, on the other hand, has a lot more sergeants available. Uh, and, and pole arms as well. It just seems like they brought a lot more when it comes to uh, infantry. And, but they have brought some like really cheap archers, so I guess that's where they've kind of balanced the books. And we have got tier 1 sergeants that are amongst um, these units. So again, the tier 1, uh, a lot cheaper, but often, obviously a lot less effective when it comes to fighting like higher tier units. Because they're outdated from a different age, from a, quite literally a different century. These guys are from the 13th, while those... Uh, Sergeants are from the 14th, and then the knights, some of the knights that the French have are from the 15th century. So that's two centuries ahead. That's why they're, like, outdated uh, and just get beaten quite often. We have got some hangers actually here for the uh, for the English as well. So they brought some of their own. Clearly, they're like, ah, we've got to have a bit of uh, bit of these guys just to prove that the Welsh longbows are outdated. I don't know. Hangers are useful, though. Hangers are very, very useful because they are very good at destroying morale. And not necessarily killing units, but destroying morale they're very good for, which in late game is very important. Both sides here look like they're just standing off against each other. Uh, not really making a move. I mean, obviously, you don't want to get your cavalry shot by gunners, which is exactly what France is trying to bring his uh, his uh, Kuvarinas over here to do. He's trying to try and shoot these this cavalry and try and uh, do some damage. I mean, England, by putting all this cavalry, is also narrowing the battlefield. Um, because France doesn't really need to keep his cav here now. He can just put the pole arms here, the gunners, maybe a cav unit or two. And then have the shock infantry go in and replace the cav. Um, and then he should win that fight, you'd imagine. The pole arms there for England are supporting. But they haven't certainly thrown enough into that fight to sort of even that out. The sergeants for France also are... Uh, Moving forward, they're also very tired, active. Okay, the, the English knight, uh, the English sergeants are uh, like freshening up quite quickly, actually, but not quickly enough, I'd say. Here we go, English knights shifting across. We're we gonna see a charge potentially here. I think we are. I think they see an opportunity to go down the middle. There are gendarmes waiting behind, but it looks like the English knights are gonna go in. It's not exactly a bait by the by the French, but this is uh, definitely a target. Oh, and then they've changed their minds. I think because they have seen the gendarmes coming forward and the pole arms and gunners. All things that can counter them. The gunners here firing, dueling with each other. Uh, certainly one way to counter gunners is certainly just to use actual bows, just to like normal missile units. They'll just rip through them. Do the English have brought two units of gunners there? Yeah, I feel like the English just have spent more money. Um, I had more money to spend. I just don't know where the English are finding those money was. The cab's all like tier two, which is really reasonably good. The French are 
Actually, it looks like they're, well, they're not outnumbered in Cav. They actually have the same amount by the looks of it. it. Just seems like the French put a lot of money into the pole arm department and maybe the gunners, the Culverinas, I don't think are much more expensive than the handgunners. Don't know, strange one. Maybe the swords just cost that much less, the uh, tier one ones. Here we go, charge coming in. This will do a lot of damage here. The English going in for a good charge, ripping through the French infantry. And that is actually going to break that sergeant almost immediately. And what a start to this battle. There we go. There you go. That sergeant wiped off the face of the earth. Shock infantry for the English. Also now running downhill and charging in against the sergeants. They should rip through these sergeants, you imagine. And they do. They do indeed. The Kulverina has also been caught out here. This is a bad start for France right now. And yeah, these cool arenas are going to obviously not stand a chance against actual melee infantry. We've got Cav now, gendarmes coming in, tying down the English Knights. Garda Scots losing decisively as well, I think, because they're getting shot by missiles. And then we're going to see another charge here from the English Knights. Going again into Sergeants, another reasonably good charge there. And they're starting to die too quickly. And the uh, French Knights have wiped out the English Knights there. That's a, uh, the gendarmes actually took literally one casualty. That's a big win there. We have uh, Shock Infantry over here engaging against Cav. Did a good job there. Uh, we have got the English bodyguard getting in behind though. He needs to be careful. He might go for a charge here. He's going in for the shock infantry, but the shock infantry of France could in fact surround him here. Could be a big win. The gunners sort of surviving. The left flank is looking very good for the French. The right is looking like it's already collapsed pretty much. Uh, this general, uh, sorry, this gendarme here should really just charge into the English foot knights. And this cab all needs to get involved soon. I know this player on this side here, Lance, likes to keep a lot of cavalry in reserve, but he needs to get it moving soon because he is in a bad space right now. England is kind of throwing away its own cav a little bit, but not like loads. It definitely could... Uh, it's not doing too bad. It's doing okay. Certainly the center as well is doing great. This cav unit here is doing excellent. A lot of units over here being passive, not doing anything. Watching the cav just die and the pole arms are yeah, dying as well. They are taking a lot of the shock infantry with them. A lot of passive English units, so that's the problem. He needs to get those units moving, get them into action on the left flank, where England's having less of a, a great time. Well, their right flank, England's right flank. There you go, there's English uh, knights dead. Where is uh, England's general? Oh, he's back here, he's safe for now. More knights getting tied down in here, and we're now seeing uh, side charges by the Gentiles going in for the sergeants here. And imagine they'll be able to rip through the tier one sergeants when they find them. English knights are beating them. I mean, French knights are second to none, really, in this period. Or just in any of the periods, they're pretty damn good. Maybe the tier one, they get, uh, they could get beaten by stuff, but tier two and three, they're pretty solid. There you go, Gentiles. Look like they might win that fight there. We'll see. Sergeant's here. Doing okay. You're going to have to hold the line. The Cav here doing a pretty decent job. In go the Sergeants. They can get the infantry, the English, into ca uh, into combat against the French cab before it charges. They w should win. The cool Verena is here trying to fight. I think they're trying to do damage to the uh, morale, but they're also doing damage to their own French cab morale. Halberd's here pinning down quite a few units. That's good. Uh, the two generals are dueling it now. Joan of Arc is dueling with the uh, English bodyguard here. We'll have to see whether she can beat him. If they can, maybe they, they can turn around on the English. We'll see. Decent side charge again into the side of those sergeants there by the, the gendarmes. Trying to do damage to them. Pretty, been pretty damn effective so far. And certainly with the gunners, if they can uh, take out that general, they could then... Uh, oh, where is the English general? He's still alive. Just. Joan of Arc still very much untouched. 59 out of 60. Done a lot of damage to these gunners charging into them. Is the English general dead? dead? No, he's very much not dead. I wonder whether he just routed... Somehow France is still holding on. A rear charge here from the cab into the back of these pole arms and sergeants could be devastating. But instead it looks like it can go after the archers, which is still not a bad target. The uh, Joan of Arc command uh, like general here is still very much alive. It's getting focused though a lot. 
And they're going to have to turn around these uh, gendarmes. Go for a rear charge here. It's a tier three unit. This is the only tier three, uh, well, one of the two tier three cabs I think France brought bar Joan of Arc. Good charge there. Uh, the gendarmes into the back of the pole arms. It's, um, Billman here should pretty much die. I think resistance on the right for the French is pretty much broken. Joan of Arc still pushing on, still pressing on for that kill against the general here. I mean, they just need to silence these uh, these arch units. I mean, again, get this gendarmes combat. They need to do what they can. I mean, they're taking out English foot knights nicely. Any sort of charge onto them is going to be deadly. Just need to avoid the, the pole arms. Joan of Arc now at half strength. Needs to be very careful. Could get killed at any moment. Now it should be the turn of the gendarmes. Go in and take out these uh, archers, these uh, these gunners, and they can turn this battle around. Joan of Arc should now just be dealing with sort of taking out sergeants here. The pole arms need to really tie down these guys so the, so the gunners can get out. But, yep. Yeah, the archers on the far side being ignored. We have had, a, had a charge there from the Gentiles, which is great. But the gendarmes might go in for a charge here. Save their gunners. Come on, guys. That's what you need to be doing. There we go. Orders given. I think. No? What is he doing? Avoiding the pole arms if he needs to. Don't get engaged. Get out of there. Get out of there. Well done. Well, the general's still in here, by the way, for uh, England. He's gone back in. He's fighting the Gentiles. Their fancy green armor. He needs to be careful pulling out like that. He could lose his general. And you are seeing lots of routing units now there, which is not so great. Uh, the uh, gendarmes have rear charged over here. It's great stuff. Taking out this infantry should be easy enough for them. Let, look at their plate armor. They have it's insane. It's very, very uh, much more upgraded than those, uh, those sergeants, those tier one sergeants there. You can take it out. The gunners are back and operational. Excellent. And now France looks like he is very much back in the running for this, uh, for this game. But the pole arms here engaging the billmen. Keep poking away at those boys. Do what you can. Uh, the dismounted French Chevaliers here have just about been killed off, but they've tied down the archers for a good amount of time, allowing the uh, French cavs to kind of go rampant. The Gentiles here are uh, cutting down handgunners. The English handgunners still trying to do some work. They're also just breaking their own like allies, like their own comrades here. I think the ge how is General is still alive? I'm not sure. This General's bodyguard is defying all sort of uh, obstacles right now. The, and the heavy billmen here, I think, are going to get killed either by a cab charge or by the gunners. It's going to be one or the other. And there you go. The cab just getting close to those pole arms broken. Uh, Joan of Arc is now just redlining, just staying there out of the way. Probably a safe idea, to be honest. The Gentiles still fighting down here. This English general refuses to die. Fighting alongside his uh, archers, just like at Agincourt. Swords breaking. And there you go, the gentles finally break. The English just refuse to give in in this small little corner here. The archers and the general holding on. If, uh, oh, Joan of Arc's come forward again. Needs to be careful because, like I said, these archers here could just take her out. That could then just break the French's last resistance. There you go, Polom's breaking there. The Swiss... Albert's proving their worth. The gunners just need to shoot that general. Keep kill that general with a, like a, a volley, and you've got a good chance of winning this. Foolishly, it looks like he's going to go in for a charge, though. Please do not do that, England. Oh, Joan of Arc might just die here. Down to 11. If he gets a good charge, though, good side charge, might win, might kill the English general. Oh, it's so close. Either side could break here. The both are wavering. Enemy general has died. There you go. The English have died. And as Joan of Arc breaks, it looks like the English army might just break first. It has literally come down to three units left. An incredibly close battle, that is for sure. An epic 100 years war, 100 years war battle, that is for sure. What a fight. There you go. Uh, just the sheer sight of the gendarmes, they break. And there you go. A period victory for the French. Again, it really looked like the French had lost that from minute one. To be honest, Lance Knight really pulling back a great comeback there. 100, 204 kills with his dismounted French Chevaliers. 184 kills with the Joan of Arc, a general there. 142 kills with uh, the Halberdiers. Literally, Joan of Arc just fights the last person in, before breaking, really. It's insane. The gunners, 105 kills. 159 kills with the gendarmes high. Uh, gendarmes late 348 kills and still really healthy and then the Gentiles 
210. Then we have Robert playing as the Kingdom of England. 119 kills with the English Foot Knights here. Uh, and then 115 kills with the other one. Then we have uh, like none of the infantry doing that. Great. 60 kills with the Welsh Longbowmen. 146 kills with one of the English Knights. That was pretty solid. And the other ones did just okay, really, apart from this one getting 15. But there you go, guys. That is today's 1212 AD battle. I hope you did enjoy. If you did, do remember to leave a like. Uh, subscribe if you're new around here. We're working towards 10k subs, guys. So all your support is very much appreciated. Do feel free to comment as well. And if you haven't checked out uh, any of the 1212 battles that are now appearing on your screen, do go and check those out. There's some epic ones there for you. And until next time, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.